Half a Day, from the book Chamoru Legends, a gathering of stories by Teresita Lourdes Perez. Here is the story of siblings, Puntan and Fotna. In a time that cannot be traced by our memories, there were two who were brother and sister to each other, who were like gods and roamed the great vastness together. But the time for their shared life was to end soon. The brother felt the death of his body and foresaw his sister's grief and impending loneliness, and this caused him deep pain. He did not wish sadness upon her. As he was dying, the brother bestowed upon his sister the knowledge that she contained within her the powerful gift of creation, but that her life-giving force was of no use without him, just as he could never have given life to anything without her. And as he was dying, Puntan, the brother, said to Fotna, his sister, In spite of your sadness, you must promise to use all the power within you combined with the power I leave behind. And only when we meet in this way will you be able to create. Use my body to this end, and you will not be alone. Fotna would not hear of anything to do with his death. She resisted the idea of creating anything. She was already in mourning for her brother, and Puntan's death did indeed come to pass. The great vastness expanded with a sigh, leaving Fotna so alone in a dark space that now held within a void a nothingness, which she did not understand. As Fotna held the empty shell that once was her brother, alone for the first time, she cried tears that flowed down her face to the place where her heart met her brother's head continuing in a torrent down his chest to the place where her arms met his. And when her hand and tears mingled with his body, she felt the fullness of love. The force of it moved her hand to his back to the place that once allowed him to stand tall and strong. Her hand, compelled by love, removed her brother's backbone. Once held within her hands, the spine formed into land, Itanu, and she placed Itanu into the great vastness. Fotna felt the return of a happiness and a peace that she had believed died along with Puntan. And so with her brother. This is how Fotna ended her emptiness and continued on with the task of creation. She created the ocean Itasi with his blood. She took his eyebrows and made each a rainbow, Isa. One of his eyes became the sun, Iatau. Of the other became the moon, Ipilan. Some believe that her tears, which flowed down her brother's body, formed the ocean currents and even became the stars in the sky, and that perhaps the locks of her hair, ripped from her scalp as she mourned, formed into the grass and trees upon landing on Etanu. Fotna was indeed pleased with the world that sprang from her and her brother. After the universe was complete, after every piece of the brother transformed through her wishes, and when Iat Dao shone upon their creation, she saw the breathtaking panorama of the world. To her, the evidence of her great love for Puntan was everywhere, yet he was nowhere. Fotna had no one with whom to gaze upon this world, with whom to roam this new vastness that was shaped by her, through them. She could not accept this unbearable loneliness. Situating herself where the water met the land, Fotna took day from Itanu and salt water from Itasi, and enshrouding herself in this mixture, she summoned all her power so as to transform herself into a rock. Once formed, this rock firmly planted itself deep within the backbone of its brother Earth. The intersection of rock and ground, of brother and sister, rumbled, shaking the Earth to its core, and the rock was split in two. Out of the cleft tumbled fully formed beings who looked very much like Puntan and Fotna. They stumbled onto the land and shore beneath the sun and sky, and they looked upon the Earth with eyes astounded at all that was bequeathed to them. Those who decided to stay on Etanu called themselves Etau Tautanu, or people of the land. Those who decided to leave traveled upon Etasi and populated the lands that reached out and away into Etasi from beyond the place of Fuha Rock. <laughs>